In this video, we're going to look at how to install the IM3 or Inter Application Messaging 3 support pack, which will provide you with a log4j node for IIB. And the first thing to do is just go to this URL and then scroll down and download the PDF, which will give you very detailed step-by-step -step instructions to get the system uh, running. And by that, I mean we'll be doing the initialization, the configuration, then we can do your, uh, we can do logging statements from inside the nodes. Now, keep in mind, this IM3 is actually a support pack, and it has somewhat limited support through IBM, uh, if any support at all, but you'll see from tons and tons of posts online that, of course, it works just fine. So if we skip down to page six, you'll see this is the overview that we looked at earlier, explaining the limitations of Tracenode, which we looked at in a previous video. And you'll also see uh, which we also covered in a previous video, what an appender is. And you can see here in log4j speak and output destinations like a file, for example, a log file is called an appender. Now, the very first thing that you need to do is you'll have to know that there are two separate sorts of, um, way, there are two things you have to do to install the IM support pack. The first part is on the broker itself. And then separately, there are instructions for the toolkit. So we're going to do both of those to get it running. So let's skip down to page nine. The first thing you have to do is download and then unzip the IM3 zip file. The zip file itself is listed here in that document. Click on that link, then click on I agree. Download that file somewhere useful. Then extract it. I'm just gonna put it in the same location open it up and then locate these three jar files. Now go to WinSCP, log into the core server's MQ broker, and that takes us to step two. So here we need to find out what MQSI workpath is. And workpath, by the way, is just a location for our uh, for various shared files. You can see that here, a top level string value workpath, uh, which stores the location of product data directory, which is shared between all installations. So to find out what that is, you need to log into the core server, and then we're going to switch users to the MQ broker user, and then we're going to load the profile with this dot syntax. So the dot is going to load these, um, the it's going to run this script, the MQSI profile, and then put the output of those variables into the environment. That's what the dot does. And now you can do a print env, and you'll see all of these uh, all of these environment vari variables. And if you do a grep, an insensitive one to MQSI, take a look at the, let me clean this up a little so it's easier to read. And that's actually still quite a bit of data. So instead, let's do this. We'll do an underscore afterwards. And even then, that's still quite a bit. But you get the idea. All of these are variables located in this profile. And one of those should be what we're looking for. And I see it up above, but just to be really, really clear, let's we can do another grep here, or just clean it up and say we want work path like so. There it is. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so let's copy that path because we need to give that to WinSCP. So I'm going to click on this link here, and then we're gonna type in, or paste really, the MQSI path. Because according to our instructions, we need to go into shared classes. And there's our shared classes, so let's go there. And we're supposed to copy all those files into that, uh, into each broker, so essentially into that folder. Okay, so let's select them, one, two, and three. Drag them over, there they are. Separately, we're supposed to copy, as it says, copy the log4j blah 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 file to the uh, J plugin directory. And in our environment, that ends up being this folder, opt IBM IIB-10 server J plugin. So I'm just going to do a CP. And if you get this message here, it's because you need to be root when you do this. So just do su dash, that takes you into root. And then you can issue the command from here. Now, after that, we're going to need to change the permissions. And you can see that in the instructions in step three. So ensure the broker has access to these files. And I've got these two commands listed here, so I'm just going to copy and paste them. And this, of course, you'll have to do as root, but there we go. We're going to do a ch own. So we're going to change the owner really to root mq brokers because that's how the rest of this uh, folder, this directory, has been set up. And you can see that if I ll that. So there we go. And uh, and then we just change the permissions to 755 on that uh, on that directory as well. 
where of course uh, 755 is you know read write and execute and you can see actually right here that w the 5 is going to not use a write so it's read there there's no write and then it's executable for that group this one uh, so 7 of course this is just a review for anyone who hasn't seen this 7 is these this first group and then the 5 is this group and then a five for the last uh, grouping of these but really seven applies to root and then you've got five for that group and then other is this last you know sort of group of three and that's uh, everybody else okay and that takes us through the broker portion so we are now it, we've got it installed at the broker level but we don't have it installed at the toolkit level so let's do that now so the first step here is to locate log4j login plugin feature and that is this one right here it's version 1.1 and then the next step is to unzip that file someplace. So I'm going to do that here. I'm just going to right click on it. We'll do extract all and we'll hit extract. And here is that uh, directory. Now what I'm going to do is right click on it. Or sorry, I'm going to press shift first on the keyboard and then right click on it so I can copy as path. And I'll get the path to this file. Because now I can go to help install software. And what this is actually just a an Eclipse thing. So you go help install new software and then we're going to click add here and we're going to click on local so that we can paste in really. That's actually what we're going to do is paste this in. But unfortunately it doesn't work as well as you would think. You have to take out these quotes and even if you get that to work then for the location down below you'd have to change the backslashes to forward slashes. So it ends up being actually a lot easier to just click on local. Go down to your uh, download, go into IM3, go down to the actual uh, unzipped directory that you selected, and then you'll see all of that happening for you with the for the backslash becoming a forward slash, and then the file colon being inserted in, in, in there. Now you can click on OK and see what you get. And if you get an error like this, you're going to need to correct that. So you're going to click yes and then see what went wrong. So in my case, I'm going to take out this trailing, backsla uh, tra trailing uh, forward slash and see if it finds the file, and it didn't. And if for some reason you can't figure out why it didn't work, just hit cancel and you can go back up and try it again, which is what I'm going to do. And we'll go back to add and then we're going to just this time, no pasting at all. We're going here to the log, uh, log 4J plugin feature and we're going to click on OK and see what we get. And notice we have to type in a name, so I'm just going to type in log 4J and hit OK. Still didn't work. And it turns out it's actually pretty easy to fix, just not real obvious. So you have to go install new software and then go to add and then do exactly like we did before. But the thing is you can't choose this outer folder. You have to choose this inner folder. And then you click OK, give it some sort of name. So I'll call it log4j, click OK. And now we can select both of these and click Next. And then click Next again. And then you'll need to accept the agreement and click Finish and allow it to install unsigned content and you'll need to restart the toolkit so go ahead and do that and you'll see the software relaunch and if all of that worked out now you can go to the construction palette and go down and you should see a log4j logging plugin and that's exactly what we were trying to install so now you have it installed, but at this point you need to use it. And how do you do that? Well, you need to create a broker log.xml file or some sort of log4j config file and tell the broker to use that file. And here's how you do that. So first I'm going to switch users to the broke MQ broker user, and then I'm going to make a new directory called var mqsi log. And this is where I'm going to store all of log the log related information. Okay, then I'll cd in there and ll that, and then you can see we have the broker log.xml file. Where did that come from? Well, it came from here. Go to your IM3 folder and open it up, and then you'll see samples folder, and here is the broker log.xml file, which I have transferred over to my Linux machine. So let's open that up, and here we go, and then you'll need to change the value here for the location of your file. So I've created three in my case. So I've got one for like sort of the main filtered one. I've got one for the log default and then I've got one for my log log other. And that is why you will see in this folder those th four uh, files, including the last three we just looked at. Now you'll notice that the log4j config file broker log.xml needs to be in the broker's class path. Mine is not, but you can give the fully qualified 
uh, path here. And in fact, it does say that's a best practice uh, here. Anyhow, the, to be safe, it says. So what does that look like? Well, it would look like this, var mqsi log broker log. Now here's an interesting problem you might run into if I delete this and I just put another one back in there. In your case, you just put one, just create one and you try to link it up and let's do that here and then here we go. All right, and now if you put in that path and then you save that file and you try to do the flow exercise or you're going to get an error message immediately as if it had never even contacted the broker. And if you go to problems, you'll see it listed here. It cannot be located. So to fix that, just go up to project, come down to clean, and either clean all the projects or the one that's causing the trouble. Click on OK, and now run the flow exerciser again. You won't receive any error messages, and you should be able to put messages to that queue. And test your message flow, of course, as well.